Hello and welcome to Ask GMBN. This is a weekly show where we try and answer all of your mountain bike related questions that you've left in the comments down below or sent to the email address ask at gmbn.com. Now I'm going to kick off with this first question and it's Kirsten Lapointe and he's saying, Scott, what happened to Neil? I haven't seen him recently. Good question, I've got to say. You haven't seen him recently. Last week we had Brendan Fairclaw in the shed. This week, well, I'm all on my own. So let's get into the big questions then. Reese Abel, how do you recover from a bad accident? I broke my hip in Whistler. Any recommendations? Well, Reese, sorry to hear that you broke your hip. I've heard that's a bit of a nasty one to break as well. I'd just recommend taking it slow, really build up and you'll get back to where you are in no time at all. Think about maybe starting in blues, red, and progressing back up to where you are. Have fun. And remember, you don't have to go too fast. Just be cautious and you'll be back to where you are in no time at all. Magoli is asking, can I ride red trails on a 100 millimeter hardtail? Yes, of course you can, you definitely can. It all depends on your skill level. If you feel that a red's a little bit too advanced, then maybe go back to that blue and then progressively build up to riding that red trail. Just take your time, think about what's ahead of you and make sure that you keep watching GMBN for some great videos and great tips to help you ride better. Octavian Apertre is saying, Hi, every time I use my bike and I apply the front brake, I can hear a very loud creak. I clean my bearings and it continues to sound like that. I have a carbon spacer. Is that the problem? If not, what should I do to get rid of this noise? Yeah, there's nothing worse than a creaky cockpit. It's really distracting, it's off-putting, it's annoying, and the best thing is just to strip everything apart. It could be your forks need a service, the bushes are a little bit worn, could be your front axle, make sure that you've greased everything possible that you can. I could actually direct you to a full video on how to check your cockpit and how to prevent it creaking. Even amount of grease the whole way around that headset cup and you'll find that the bearing sits in nicely and you'll just uh, even pop the bearing in. Do the same on the bottom as well. Get a nice even amount the whole way around on the inside. So we've taken the handlebars off now and as you can see in here there's a whole pile of dirt. Look at that. So that's could very likely be the cause of my creep. So give it a good wipe down and clean, get rid of any excess dirt or old grease, and we'll get ready to re-grease it and put it all back together. Diageo Cortez is saying, which is the order of trail color sides, depending on how difficult it is? So, you're gonna start off with your greens, then you've got your blues, you've got your reds, you've got your blacks, and if you're in Canada or America, you've probably got double blacks, and they're the gnarly ones. But add into that, you've also got orange, and that tends to be a free ride line where there's jumps, there's a little bit of flow, you can have a lot of fun on the trails as well. But just start where you feel comfortable, gradually build up over time, and your riding will really progress. Jesus Guzman is saying, can I use a trail bike to enduro? Enduro? Yeah, you definitely can. Trail bike is effectively an enduro bike. It's just that the enduro phrase has really come from the Enduro World series. It's grown to become a bit of a bit of everything really. It's all about mountain biking. So trail riding, mountain biking, enduro, all kind of a similar thing, but definitely you can use a trail bike. So pick it out and have fun. Ryan Gaston. Hi guys, enjoy the YouTube show and have recently got into mountain biking. But I'm struggling with the confidence to do something. Yeah, Ryan, it does take a little bit of time to build it up. The more that you ride, the more comfortable you're gonna feel, of course. Practice makes perfect, and you just want to keep getting better. I'm actually gonna direct you straight to a video on how to build confidence on mountain biking. If you're not sure what's ahead or you don't feel confident in the trail, then why not just park your bike up to the side, make sure it's out the way and off the trail for other users, and go and have a look. Walk down it. By doing that, you're gonna identify you're going to be able to see where grip points are, where the challenging features are, and it's going to give you that little bit more confidence that you're going to be able to get down it safely. You're not going to be scared. The only downside is you might find it a little bit intimidating. It's time for the quick fire round. The first one coming from Alilandro Lozano, and he's saying, do you actually send merchandise to other countries? Yes, we do. You can pick up some sweet swag, just like this t-shirt, and it will get sent worldwide. Check it out, we've got some new stuff that's just been added to the shop this week. Ziga Uder is saying, when we make another unboxing video? As soon as Neil is back from his paternity, there's gonna be more unboxing. There's great product, there's great prizes to be won, so watch this space. Eric Pham, hi Jambian. hi Eric. Would you consider doing a bike packing series? 
yes, we've actually talked about between Neil and I quite a lot. We're definitely wanting to do it. We're just trying to work out where we're going to do it, how we're going to do it and when. So coming soon. Wheel chase. Is it very hard to ride up a medium steep hill on a downhill bike? Yes, very hard. Very, very hard. In fact, the bikes are heavy. You've got all the extra suspension. The gears aren't really designed to go uphill. So it's definitely not the funnest. I'll stick to my enduro bike. Thank you very much. Lucas Nigeria is saying, what's the opinion about a rigid fork like a Niner? Well, Lucas, I've got to say that I don't have anything against a rigid fork, but I do like a little bit of the dampening properties of a suspension fork. But it all comes down to personal preference and what you're riding. So let us know what you want to ride and maybe we can help you out a little bit more. Quick fire round done. It's now time for Correct Me If I'm Wrong. And it's that time when you guys can actually send us little video clips pictures as well of you riding out on the trails and look for a little bit of critique how you might do something a little bit better and this one first one comes from Sam Taylor and he's asking how can he clear his mate a little bit better Sam the first thing that I'm gonna say is wear a helmet if you don't wear a helmet you're a donut but you want to clear your mate a little bit better I could suggest a couple of different ways we actually got a great video out this week four ways to jump higher and one of them is definitely having a little bit more speed the other is making sure that you've got that bunny hop technique absolutely dialed. So you're going back over the bike, you're then pushing up over the front, and that's what's going to really lift that back end up, and you're not going to be worried about clipping your mate. Now the next clip comes from Maxime Brousset, and he says you pronounce it in French. He's Belgium, and yesterday I did go to the bike park for the first time. So I hired a bike, saw this jump, I wanted to try it, but I ended up crashing hard. Do you guys have some tips for drop-offs or even jumps this size? Let's take a look, shall we? Okay, so you're coming with pretty good speed. Yeah, I can kind of, can definitely tell you what's going on. You come off the jump and you actually go, you go off it pretty well, you look quite confident, but it's when you're in the air that you actually lose your body position. So you start to roll off the jump, you go a little bit too far over the back, you then try and counteract yourself when you're mid-air. You can see that you're a little bit worried on the bike as well. You come in a little bit too nose heavy, and then bottom out the forks, all the suspension goes through the rear and you land a little bit off balance. And when you land off balance, you just sort of pull the bike ground. It's just not having that strength and confidence when you're in the air. And that's what actually causes you to crash. Glad though that you seem to be okay. And I'm sure that you'll be back in the bike park in no time shredding. You could also send that video into crashes of the week for the Dirt Shed Show. It's a good one. Anyway, that's another edition of Ask GMBN. If you want to get your mountain bike questions answered, you can leave it in the comments section down below. Or alternatively, you could actually send in to ask at gmbn.com. And don't forget to send in clips of your mountain biking for us to try and help you get a little bit better. Whilst you're here, if you want to watch some more videos from GMBN, why don't you click just here and you're actually going to get to a top five playlist. And if you click here, you're going to get to flats versus clips and you'll find out which is faster. Click in the big globe somewhere in the dirt shed and you'll get to subscribe. You get a great video every single day of the week and you'll never miss one.